Next, and this time we focus on a pending agreement with Colombia. This one, a NAFTA-style trade agreement, allows Americans to import goods made with cheap Colombian labor, but in order to keep that labor cheap, our trading partners frequently murder the organizers that would raise wages. It's very effective. Uh, union leaders in Colombia, in fact, have promised to improve the records of assassinations in that country with an action plan. Meanwhile, half of the union assassinations on the planet Earth occur in Colombia, which I can tell you does not have half of the world's population. As a result, there's plenty of congressional skeptics. Any trade agreement with Colombia must produce a verifiable reduction in the violence. It must protect human rights. It must end the impunity enjoyed by death squads and paramilitaries. Due to the lack of the benchmarks for progress, Colombia could still have a record year of assassinations and the action plan would be declared a success. One union worker was threatened in an anonymous phone call to his house, this after returning from a negotiating session with the French multinational Sodexo. I heard a voice say to my wife, ma'am, tell that, tell that man if he does not stop running off at the mouth, we'll cut out his tongue. With us, Huffington Post workplace reporter Dave Jamison, who has a beautiful story out today on the trade agreement. Also joining us today, Scott Paul, executive director of the Alliance for American Manufacturing. All three of these agreements stink to high heaven, whether it's the money laundering and bank secrecy in Panama, the, the refunding of the North Korean government to develop a nuclear program through the backdoor payoffs to North Korean slaves uh, out of S South Korea. And then we have Colombia. Uh, uh, Dave, give us the highlights of why this specific deal is so disgusting. Well, Dylan, uh, a lot of people are, are, I think, justly worried that it doesn't do enough to uh, address the, the problem of violence against uh, unionists in Colombia. You know, as you said in your intro, uh, there's really no more dangerous place in the world to be involved in a union than in Colombia. They've had nearly 3,000 murders of unionists in the last 25 years, uh, including 51 last year. Uh, one reason this deal has managed to come along is because uh, Colombia and the U.S. agreed to this labor action plan, uh, where, whereby uh, over the course of, of months and years, uh, Colombia is going to address some of these, these problems and, and, and institute some legislation that's supposed to protect yeah. unionists. Uh, I think the concern is that it really it's just window dressing because it's not, it's not exactly tied to the trade yeah. agreement itself. And, and Scott, isn't the point of these types of deals for the businesses in America that lobby to get them? and benefit from them, whether it's with China, whether whatever, is to get access to cheaper labor, less regulation, less environmental restrictions, et cetera, et cetera. It's beautiful if you run a business. You're like, hey, I just drop your cost by 50%. You just make more money. You're like, that's fantastic. There is no better way to keep wages down than to do business with a country that murders union organizers. You I mean, it's it. pretty, in other words, the you incentive right. for the American businesses who would maybe like to kill union organizers in America but wouldn't dare do it, is just to get a free trade agreement with a country where you can kill them. It's pretty good business. Yeah, the challenge. If you're into these, murder. You're right, Dylan. The challenge of these is that investor rights, as you point out, are protected. And they're protected through the courts, they're protected through countervailing tariffs. And you see investment flowing overseas, you see factories going to these places. Labor rights. It is window dressing. There is not an, you know, labor rights, if, if you're a worker, you do not have the same standing as the investment that's made in a factory. And that's fundamentally the problem with our model of free trade. And we wonder why our trade deficit grows and why we're losing these manufacturing jobs. Well, we're losing and, jobs and, in general. Well, Money's flying out of our country by the trillion. You bet. And, and why there hasn't been labor rights improvements in any of these countries where we've had free trade deals. And it's simply because these deals value investors more than they do workers and you can apply it to any country and applying it to Colombia is obviously the most egregious example because uh, they kill un them. union members are actively targeted yeah. there but until we change the model we're not going to change the outcome I mean Dave Jamison would you say from a business standpoint that killing union organizers is a good way to keep wages down 
Uh, yeah, that, that may very well be, Dylan. Um, you know, the, the thing with this deal is that for workers in both the U.S. and, and Colombia, it, it may turn out to be a very bad deal. Um, you know, I, I think for Colombian, Colombians specifically in, in the agricultural industry, there's going to be a lot of growing pains. You know, multinationals uh, benefit greatly from these deals. I think a lot of those workers are going to end up yeah. displaced. And, and as Scott can tell you, for American workers, I, I think quite a few jobs we, we may see going overseas because of these deals. Yeah, it's become incredible clear to me and I think many that basically all these trade deals NAFTA our trade relationship with China all this sort of nonsense etc are incredibly profitable and incredibly advantageous for a small group of American businesses those are the people that are in Obama's office in the Republicans office it's not China it's not Colombia it's not Panama it's an American businessman or business group saying let us do this man let us do this deal we're gonna make so much money it won't hurt anybody everybody will be fine at what point will the American government the American president Democratic leadership and Republican leadership stop doing favors to get their buddies rich by picking off cheap labor, polluting foreign nations, all the things that we do, and basically they're selling out America as a bribe to an executive that then costs America its productive future. Well, Dylan, ultimately, this is about jobs and the promises these, these companies make. And they say, oh, if all you have to do is we need a free trade agreement with Korea or Colombia or Mexico, and we're going to create thousands of manufacturing jobs here. And you can count almost every company that made a promise to create jobs under a free trade deal and how far, far it has fallen it's a lie. short. It's a lie. It's a lie. And so you have this facade, and the politicians want to believe it because that's where the money is, quite honestly, as you for their contribution. And th this th this is nothing about a philosophy. This isn't free trade versus protectionism. This, this isn't is rig about trade. That, that's right. And it's not even a Republican problem alone. It's a, it's a Democratic and a Republican well, problem. And the voters don't like this. You know, they want us to get tough on China. They want us to have balanced trade. Uh, they're really ambivalent about these free trade right. deals. They don't see a benefit what to them. What confuses me is how the Democrats and Obama skate around acting like it's the Republicans that want these awful deals. Well, well that's right. When they're the ones doing right. it. Right. Well, Bill Clinton passed I, the mother I'm of all well trade aware. deals, which was NAFTA, and did the did the China agreement. Uh, George Bush didn't enforce anything. But having an activist trade yeah. agenda makes sense to me. If it's going to be about balancing our trade deficit and taking on China, that's the activist trade agenda. And we all of a sudden, you create a balanced president. flow. You need yeah. the Plaza Accord. You need to not have China tag. I mean, this is I'm going to get irritated, and I'm trying to enjoy my summer. Uh, Dave Jamison, it's a real pleasure. Congratulations on a beautiful piece of journalism. Check it out on the front of the. And Post, Scott Paul, Alliance for American Manufacturing. Thank you very much for helping all of us understand better just how screwed up all of this is, even if it just screws up my fishing trip this weekend. Uh, Thanks, Scott Dylan. Paul, Dave Jamison, thank you guys. And again, if you want to learn more about just how screwed up these trade agreements are, which I strongly encourage you to do, and then to directly in, uh, engage uh, your congressman, we've harnessed the resources of DylanRadigan.com, The Huffington Post, and of course MSNBC to bring you more on today's segment about Colombia, Panama, and North Korea, podcasts, blogs, and videos, all there. To learn more, it's up right now on DylanRadigan.com.